Are you guys waiting for something? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'm just so happy to see each and every one of you here today. Bienvenue au champ. Welcome to the House of Commons. I'm the Deputy Speaker of the House of Commons. Uh, as you can understand, uh, things always uh, are always on time here at the House of Commons. <laughs> But I just wanted to make sure that you knew that we were about five minutes out from our, our, our guest speaker uh, to be coming to address Parliament. So if we can just uh, wait just a couple more minutes to make sure that uh, the party can make it in uh, with, uh, with, of course, the, the Right Honourable Prime Minister and, uh, and the Speaker of the House of the Commons and the Speaker of the Senate. And uh, I'm going to ask each and every one of you, uh, si possible. If possible, when the speech is over, I want everyone to stay in their seat. Done. If I can ask each and every one of you to stay in your seats. There will be a few people that do need to leave with the delegation. Uh, so we're going to try to leave, let them uh, move out. But I, the most of you, I want you to stay here until I come and tell you it's time to leave. Uh, because we don't want to congest because once the halls start to get busy, it makes it difficult for the official delegation to actually uh, get out of the premises or out of the precinct. So if I can ask you to do, I'll come back up at the end of the speech. Uh, to uh, to sort of direct uh, the airplane, if you want, if you want that uh, that folks can do. So uh, again, uh, merci beaucoup. Thank you very much for coming, Parliament, to our our senators. It's always good to see you. We have a number of special guests that are here today, and I just wanted to welcome each and every one of you here once again. Uh, bon après-midi. I will see you at the end of the speech, and I'm sure I'm sure you will all be very happy uh, with, of course, the address from President Zelensky. Merci beaucoup. Enjoy. <laughs> Glory to Ukraine.
Your Excellency, Prime Minister, President Gagné, or President Gagné, party leaders, honorable parliamentarians, distinguished guests, bienvenue. Welcome to this extraordinary event, the second joint address to Parliament by His Excellency Volodymyr Zelensky, President of Ukraine. On behalf of my colleagues, we are honored for your visit. As we come together under one roof, we take a moment to celebrate the friendship and shared values of our countries. We celebrate our people and the history of cooperation between Canada and Ukraine. And we celebrate solidarity. Allow me to now invite the Right Honourable Prime Minister to take the floor. Mr. Speaker, parliamentarians, honoured guests, friends, we gather today at a pivotal point in history. This is a time of incredible uncertainty. Attacks upon the rules-based international order threaten to upend the peace and prosperity that have been the bedrock of Canada's success. This is a challenge on a generational scale, a challenge that history will judge us on a challenge we must confront with lion-hearted courage, and the world can find no better inspiration than our friend here with us in our house today, President Volodymyr Zelensky and his wife, the First Lady of Ukraine, Polena Zelenska. One year, six months, and 29 days ago, Vladimir Putin launched a full-scale invasion of Ukraine, unleashing a campaign of violence and brutality that has left countless dead and forced millions to flee. But for one year, six months, and 29 days, the people of Ukraine have defended their homes, their language, and their freedom to choose their own future. They have fought back with a courage that has inspired the world, and they have been led by President Zelensky, a great champion of democracy. Monsieur le Président Zelensky. President Zelensky, in March of last year, you addressed our parliament virtually. In June of this year, I addressed your parliament in Kyiv, the Verkhovna Rada, where I was touched to see so many Canadian flags in the chamber. Today, you are able to be here in person to speak about the fight for your democracy and your freedom. And you do it to remind us that in your country, Russia continues its assault and Ukrainians are sacrificing their lives. Monsieur le Président Zelensky. President Zelensky, we speak regularly. We've spoken about what is happening at the Zaporizhia nuclear power station and the environmental destruction caused by Russia's tactics. We've spoken of the human toll, children kidnapped, and people who are being taught to hate. I've seen Putin's destructive evil firsthand during my visits to Ukraine since the war began. I saw it in the bombed out neighborhoods and the bridges reduced to twisted steel in the abandoned homes. I also saw it in the faces of your citizens. They walked down the street, sat in cafes, daily life seemingly persisting, but with everyone I spoke to, I saw in the backs of their eyes the weight of this war, the fear for their fellow Ukrainians on the front lines, the anxiety that another air raid silent siren would go off at any moment the loss of a loved one. The toll of this war on the mental health and well-being of Ukrainians is immeasurable. I know, First Lady Zelenska, you are dedicated to the work to address this. So today we are funding 
providing funding to support mental health care in Ukraine as we continue to applaud your tremendous leadership in these difficult times. <clears throat> When rules-based orders crumble, so much is lost. One example of how this breakdown manifests is the horrifying, preventable hardship as Russia blocks grain exports, worsening hunger and starvation among the world's most vulnerable people. President Zelensky, you and the Ukrainian people are holding the rules-based order in the balance. You are on the front lines not just of the fight for Ukraine, but in the fight for the kind of future we are all going to be living in. Rules matter. Following the Second World War, the bloodiest and deadliest conflict humanity has ever known, the whole world's nations agreed on a common set of rules and principles to re-establish peace. For three quarters of a century, these rules have allowed historic prosperity. They have fostered trade, given citizens the necessary confidence to invest in their future, and helped millions of people escape poverty. There isn't a single place that hasn't known prosperity thanks to peace. Well, what Putin has done is a break with civilization. It is a violation of our common humanity. It is an attempt to disassemble the rules-based order that protects our freedom. It is a move to weaken democracy and assert autocracy. Putin governs with deception, violence, and repression. He imprisons his own people and stirs up ugly sentiments of xenophobia and racism. But his imperial delusions in Ukraine have been met with a fierce defense, a defense that is not just strong because of the support from friends around the world, but because those who fight for their freedom will always fight with their whole hearts. C'est pourquoi... That is why we must all fight by all possible means. We must speak out loud and clear against violations of national sovereignty and affronts to international law. Violations to the rules-based international order must be denounced, and aggressors must be held responsible for their actions. That has always been our government's position. That is why, without exception, we oppose authoritarian states and we stand by those who defend international law, universal human rights, and the ability of all peoples to decide on their own future. That is why we remained faithful to our principles when Michael Kovrig and Michael Spaver were arbitrarily detained by China. There are countries that are bending or breaking the rules, political forces that are pandering to demagoguery, and we are all experiencing a rise of disinformation, some state-sponsored, some politically motivated, that twists facts and refuses evidence and science. In this era of uncertainty and of resurgent great power competition, rules are what will protect us. And it's not enough for them to just be written down somewhere. We must advocate for them, stand up for them, and live by them. History will judge us on how we defend democratic values. And Ukraine is at the tip of the spear in this great challenge of the 21st century. That's why Canada and Canadians are there for Ukraine and why we stand so unequivocally against Russia. It's why people across Canada have welcomed with open arms over 175,000 Ukrainians, some of whom are here with us today. There are 
There are those here who've come from Bucha and Kharkiv. They are part of a group of Ukrainian scientists who found safety in Canada, and their expertise in the clean economy is helping the world unwind its dependence on the fossil fuels weaponized by despots like Putin. We also have leaders from the Ukrainian-Canadian community like Orisia and others. They come from the Canadian prairies, where so many Ukrainian immigrants have settled for over a century, and they have led the charge in helping their communities welcome refugees fleeing Putin's bombs, everything from collecting clothing donations to helping them find homes. We're also joined by Agnes and Susan, who lost their brother Anthony, a humanitarian volunteer, just 12 days ago. He was killed in a Russian strike while trying to help civilians in Donetsk Oblast, innocent people who are being brutalized by the Kremlin's unprovoked aggression. Today, our gallery is filled with Ukrainians who've come to show their support and gratitude for you, Volodymyr, but I think we all need to take a moment to thank them for their bravery, their generosity, and their solidarity with the values of democracy. President Zelensky, I have clearly said that our government will stand by you for as long as it takes. Canada has provided nearly $9 billion in military, financial, and humanitarian support to Ukraine since Putin began his war of aggression. We are making a longer-term, multi-year commitment that provides predictable, steady support to Ukraine. It will include $650 million over three years for 50 armored vehicles, including medical evacuation vehicles that will be built by Canadian workers in London, Ontario. We'll also send F-16 trainers for pilots and for maintenance so Ukrainians are able to maximize their use of donated fighter jets. On va continuer de we will continue to work with our partners, including within NATO, to provide unwavering support. And we will continue to provide economic support to Ukraine over the next year so that it remains a a strong, dynamic, and prosperous democratic country. But our greatest hope is that you won't need military or financial support for long, and that peace returns soon. But it cannot be a false peace based on a compromise imposed by the aggressor. For a lasting peace, we must oppose Putin and reject his attempts to bring us back to a time when might made right. A lasting peace must clearly establish that borders must be respected, regardless of the size of the neighboring army. This peace must restore the right of Ukrainians to determine their own future. Canada stands with the principles of Ukraine's peace formula. We believe that peace must respect the UN Charter, be based in international law, and preserve Ukraine's territorial integrity. This is the peace we must fight for, and that is what Ukraine has done for one year, six months, and 29 days. Putin thought it would make, he'd make quick work of marching on Kyiv. Putin thought President Zelensky would cave in the face of personal peril. But, sir, you have not. You have galvanized the world. You have made the bonds between democratic allies and friends stronger than ever. Volodymyr, Olena, to see you here today in this chamber, to see so many proud and courageous Ukrainians here today, after everything you have all endured, is a testament to the commitment of your country and the strength of your fight. 
Monsieur le Président Zelensky. President Zelensky, you have shown the rest of the world true leadership, even in the most difficult moments. You fight with a sense of hope, and you are dedicated to the security and progress of your people. In times like this, the world needs leaders who understand that true strength is not about wielding power, but about empowering others. True strength is not about crushing your opponent with brute force and lies. It's about respecting the humanity and the dignity of everyone. It's about governing from a basis of truth and compassion. In times of crisis, holding fast to positive values like this can be a lot harder than resorting to fear and resentment, but it is well worth it. When the history books are written, we know what they will say of you, that you were among those who stood up for their principles, no matter how hard, among those who stood up to bullies, among those who protected the less fortunate, among those who unified people in the face of fear, among those who defended the rules and upheld the law, among those who put justice, hope, and freedom above all else. We know that democracy is one of the greatest expressions of freedom. It gives us the right to have a voice, to choose our own future, to be protected by a system with justice and accountability. But democracy does not happen by accident, and it will not continue without effort. We must defend it and strengthen it with all that we have. Volodymyr, my friend, you have a unique understanding of this. You stare down Putin every single day. And we will be with you and all heroes of this courageous fight for as long as it takes. Slava Ukraini! Glory to Ukraine! Mr. Speaker, it is now my distinct honor to welcome President Volodymyr Zelensky of Ukraine to address this House. to heroes. Thank you so much. Um, dear ladies and gentlemen, Canada, uh, before I start, I just want, just want to remind one thing. This thing is very important to understand both. Ukraine and Canada. And what we are up to, what we need to do, and to do it together. 1983, the city of Edmonton. Its history is closely linked to the destiny of Ukraine and Ukrainian Canadian community that here in Edmonton, the first monument to the victims of Holodomor was built in the world. Thank you so much. Thank you. Was built to remember the genocide against the Ukrainian people the genocide ordered and perpetrated by Moscow, the first ever Holodomor monument in the world. At that time, Ukraine didn't yet have memorials commemorating the victims of genocide of Ukrainians because Ukraine was under Moscow's 
control back then. This fall will mark the 40th anniversary since that first and very important commemoration of the victims of Holodomor. A lot has changed since then. Ukraine gained independence. Ukraine is restoring its own historic memory. Dozens of other countries, their parliaments, their governments have already recognized Holodomor as the genocide of the Ukrainian people. And this year, this year alone, there have been 11 of such recognitions. And I'm sure that the world, the whole world, will recognize the truth about Holodomor. But there is something that has not changed either in 40 years since the monument in Edmonton was built or in 90 years since the Holodomor. Moscow now, as always, is bent on controlling Ukraine and makes use of all available means to do that, including genocide. It is genocide what Russian occupiers are doing to Ukraine. And when we want to win, when we call on the world to support us, it is not just about an ordinary conflict. It is about saving lives of millions of people. Literally, physical salvation. Ordinary women and men, children, our families, whole communities, entire cities, Russia's destruction of Mariupol, of Valnavaha, or Bakhmut, or any other city or village in Ukraine must not go unpunished. Life, life, life and justice must prevail everywhere in Ukraine and for all Ukrainians. This Russian aggression must end with our victory. Yes. Yes. So that, so that Russia will never bring back genocide to Ukraine and will never ever try to do so, Moscow must lose once and for all. And it will lose. Dear speakers, the whole parliament of Canada, dear Justin, Mr. Prime Minister, ladies and gentlemen of the government, dear representatives of, of all the communities, and cities, all citizens of Canada. In my opinion, one of the most startling qualities of your country is that justice is not an empty word for Canada. Another extremely important fact about you is that you never, never ever make a political bet on hatred and enmity. And you are always on the bright side of history. Thank you. That's to you. Thank you so much. During the First World War and in the time between those terrible, terrible wars and during the Second World War, and during the Cold War, you always defended freedom. You have always defended justice. And I had no doubt that you would choose the side of freedom and justice when Russia launched a full-scale war against Ukraine. Thank you. But it is... But it is never enough only to choose the right side. You also need to be able to be a leader on the side, and you do. You are a leader, and I thank you for that, Canada. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for your Thank you very much for your political support for Ukraine. And this is truly support of a leader. And it is global in scale. Because when you are fighting for something, when you are fighting for good in human nature, the false neutrality, neutrality looks obviously immoral. When one sees true leaders, all others who are afraid to be real, to speak out, to fight, have only two opinions, to change or to be looked down. And I thank you, Canada, for being a real example of leadership and honesty for so many around the world, an example that inspires others to defend life. Canada's support for Ukraine with weapons and equipment has allowed us to save thousands, thousands of lives. This includes air defense systems, armored vehicles, artillery shells, and very significant assistance in demining. Thank you so much. Canada's leadership in sanctions against Russia for this war and terror really encouraged others in the world to follow, to follow your lead. And I'm especially grateful for your extremely strong 100% leadership support of the Ukrainian movement to NATO. For your strong participation in training our soldiers, it's very important. It's already a tradition that Canada trains those who defend the world. Thousands. Yes. Thousands, thousands and thousands of pilots during the Second World War, thousands of Ukrainians now. And this is what makes victory, victory strong, victory indispensable, training. Thank you for this. Thank you for your economic support, for helping Ukraine to get rid of its dependence on Russian nuclear fuel. And this is progress, not not only for us, really, Ukraine and Canada together with their partners and really friends are demonstrating to everyone that it is quite realistic to completely cut off, cut off our ties with dubious Russian nuclear technologies in addition to be purely technological danger. The Russian nuclear industry also serves Moscow's political expansion. Russia uses nuclear technology and construction of nuclear power plants like gas and oil for political attacks against the sovereignty of other nations. Russia is trying to break the sovereignty of other through its manipulation of energy resources, all energy resources. So, the more nations are free from Russian energy resources, the sooner energy in the world will once again become just an energy resource. <laughs> Not a weapon. Not a weapon, not a weapon against sovereignties. Another important area of our cooperation, literally justice. Today, in talks with Prime Minister with Justin, uh, we discussed the Canadian initiative for the G7 to set up efforts to confiscate Russian assets. Those funds that Russian and its henchmen used to pay for their war should be used to fairly compensate for the damage caused by war and terror. <laughs> active, 
active and global work is also required to bring Russia to justice for the crime of aggression itself and for absolutely all crimes from this aggression. All death, every deportation of every child, every adult, every life needs to be protected. And every attacked nation needs justice to rule. The world needs it too so that other potential aggressors can see that war ends in verdicts for the aggressor. And I urge you, Canada, to extend your ability to lead to other countries, especially in this matter of justice, of prosecuting the aggression, of compensation for aggression, of making the aggressor feel how strong justice is. And most of all, I would like to thank you, Canada, for the purely human thing, for making Ukrainians feel at home when they are here in Canada. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And this is, you know, this is not just a, a legacy of history, this is a legacy of character. The Ukrainian-Canadian community is about millions of Ukrainian destinies that have become the destiny of Canada with all its diversity of communities. Freedom, loving courage, our special inner call for justice, the ability of our people to share comfort wherever they go to build and create, not to ruin or humiliate. Ukrainian flags in Canada are a part of everyday life as absolute trust to Canada in Ukraine. In fact, such proximity provides many answers, including answers to the question about this war. Can we give up? No. Can we betray the good in human nature? No. Can we agree to evil? No. Can we allow our identity to be erased? No. Ukraine and Canada are the same. We stand and we fight for life. Ukraine, not genocide, will be victorious in this war. People will be the winners, not the Kremlin. Freedom will be the winner. Justice will be the winner. You can know this for sure about us, because you know for sure about yourself that you would never submit to evil. Je te remercie, Canada. Thank you, Canada. And uh, may one day soon a monument, a monument be built in Maybe Edmonton. <laughs> As in other cities of the world and in the cities of Ukraine to honor the victory of our people in this war. Our <laughs> Our common victory, common victory with you, with you, the people of Canada, with all your communities, with all your legacy, legacy of good. Ladies and gentlemen, 
today me and uh, my beautiful first lady uh, I had uh, had honor uh, really had the honor of meeting with the Governor General of Canada Honorable Mary Simon and she taught me she taught me a word from her mother tongue Ayuinata Ayuinata she said the meaning of this word is don't give up don't give up stay strong against all odds and so shall it be are you in Atta, Canada? Are you in Atta, Ukraine? Slava Ukraini! Thank you, Mr. President. I now invite the Honorable Raymond Gagné, Speaker of the Senate, to take the floor. Monsieur President, Ms. Zelenska. Prime Minister Trudeau, Speaker Rota, dear parliamentarians, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. President, it is a great honor and a real privilege for me to thank you for your very powerful and very inspiring words. We are all honored by your presence. The last time you addressed this parliament, just a few weeks, after Russia's full-scale assault on your country, you implored us to imagine what the Ukrainian people were feeling, to imagine what it's like to be bombed and invaded without provocation, to imagine what it feels like to understand the meaning of the invasion, that Russia was not only attacking Ukrainian territory, but also its very sovereignty. Mr. President, I can say without hesitation that we have heard you. Your words have echoed in the chambers of our Parliament, in our committee rooms and offices, and all across our great country. Shortly after I became Speaker of the Senate of Canada, I was asked about the importance of role models and I expressed my belief that if you see it, you can be it. Mr. President, a new generation is seeing you. Having worked with young people in the field of education for over 35 years, 
and as a mother of two male adult children, I am heartened by the model you are showing. <laughs> Young people around the world are seeing that a democratically elected voice is the real form of power. Monsieur le Président, Mr. President, for more than 18 months, you have been the epitome of the people's mobilization and a source of inspiration for the world. Whether you were speaking from a bunker or behind a podium, in a meeting room or on the front line, you never gave up, you never gave up, wavered or hesitated, embodying the spirit and resilience of the Ukrainian people. I'm certainly not the first to mention it, but who could forget February 25th, 2022? You were in the center of Kyiv, the target of the Russian invader. It was one of the most perilous and uncertain moments of the war, and you had one strong message to convey. We are here. Your people have carried forward this resolve at Hostomel, at Kharkiv, and beyond. While we draw inspiration from their stories, we also recognize the realities Ukrainians have faced. Withstanding thousands of artillery rounds every day, grieving the unrelenting loss of family, loved ones, colleagues, and neighbors, patiently working through treacherous minefields while drones circle overhead, defending against waves of attacks on civilian infrastructure, and taking steps where and when they can to recover and rebuild. Mr. President, your people's resilience in the face of such aggression compels the international community in your now famous words to be here for Ukraine however long it takes. And our message today, which you can bring back to your people, is equally clear. The Canadian people stand with Ukraine. We aren't going anywhere. On behalf of all Senators, of all members of the House of Commons, and, no doubt, of all Canadians, I thank you once again for your courage and your determination and for your inspiring words to Canadians and to the entire world today. Slava Ukraini! Glory to Ukraine! Merci, Madame. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Monsieur le Premier Ministre. Mr. Prime Minister. Mr. President, as has been noted today, you join a very small group of world leaders who have addressed a joint session of our Parliament for a second time. Among those leaders, one stands out for his oratory, his leadership in the face of adversity, and his strong determination to fight on behalf of his people and on behalf of what is right. That leader was the late African President and Nobel Peace Prize winner, Nelson Mandela.
In his first address to, join the, to the joint session of our Parliament, Nelson Mandela said of the Canadian people, and I quote, they are like us, like brothers and sisters, from whose warm embrace we shall never be parted. Mr. President, I want you to know that we feel like that still with Ukraine. I'm confident that you'll share the same conviction after your visit today, Mr. President. Indeed, beyond metaphor, the ties between Canada and Ukraine are above all family ties. Ties between our two peoples strengthened by the Ukrainian-Canadian community, which totals 1.3 million people. Your words today also remind us of another world leader who addressed both our houses during the time of war. In December 1941, during World War II, the British Prime Minister Sir Winston Churchill traveled to Ottawa and delivered an impassioned speech on behalf of his people to rally for the continued support for his country at war. It was a defining moment of history and one that must never be forgotten. We have here in the chamber today Ukrainian Canadians, Ukrainian Canadian world veteran from the Second World War who fought the Ukrainian independence against the Russians and continues to support the troops today, even at his age of 98. His name is Yaroslav Hunka, and uh, I was going to say he's in the gallery, but I think you beat me to that. <laughs> but I'm very proud to say that he is from North Bay and from my riding of Nipissing to Miskaming. <laughs> he's a Ukrainian hero, a Canadian hero, and we thank him for all his service. Thank you. At a time when freedom is regressing in many parts of the world and autocrats are supporting each other, Ukraine's resistance has rallied democracies and spurred us to action. Resistance often starts at the top. When you, Mr. President, with you, Mr. President, but also with the Verkova Rada, where the business of Parliament the people's business has never stopped. I know that parliamentarians in this chamber have marveled at the courage and determination of our counterparts. Ukrainian legislators have pursued their critical work despite the continued warning of missiles and drones, despite the threat to well-being of their families and homes, and despite the overwhelming challenges of recovery and rebuilding. Throughout this terrible war, I have had the great privilege of developing a great friendship with my counterpart, the Speaker of the Verkhovna Rada, Chairman Stefanchuk. Like you, Mr. President, he advocates for his country with passion and with poise. And like you, he has conveyed what is at stake, Ukraine's freedom, but also preservation of the rules-based international order which is a fundamental part of the future of the democratic world. Most recently, we spoke at the G7 Speakers Summit in Japan. At that time, he shared with me a drawing from a young Ukrainian girl who thanked Canada for our support and our shared wish to all, that all Ukrainian children 
should live under peaceful skies. It moved me to tears, and it moves me there again. It is moments like these, bonds like these, that remind us that we must all stand with Ukraine in the face of the threat to its sovereignty. Mr. President, Canada has stood with Ukraine people throughout its proud history, and that will not change. We will continue to stand for justice and peaceful skies over Ukraine. Thank you once again for addressing our parliament. Slava Ukraini! Glory to Ukraine! Just have your attention just for a few moments. Uh, we know we have some of the delegation that are going to have to leave, so we'll allow them to go first. And maybe some of our media friends and photographers and all those fun things. But if all of us could maybe just have a seat, uh, speak amongst yourselves, talk about how great, how great a speech that was uh, from our from our friend President Zelensky. So I will come back when I I will come back in about three minutes to be able to tell you. Take minutes. I'll be back in about three minutes to tell you that you may now leave. And uh, chat amongst yourselves. We could have question period if anyone was interested. 